This video will show you a really quick approach to setting up the base geometry for a game level. We're going to quickly build a road and a terrain and keep seamless tiling textures as much as possible throughout the terrain. This demonstration is utilizing the Corvex plugin, which is a very inexpensive plugin you can purchase from wallworm.com. Here we have five splines that represent four zones on my level. These splines are the boundaries between the zones. I'm going to select these splines and from them create four Corvex objects with the Corvex utilities. Now that we have these four objects, we're going to change some parameters to better meet our needs in this scene. First, I'm going to raise the height of the background object, which is going to be the cliff in the background. Next, we can apply some material to these objects. I already have materials in my material editor, and I'm just going to drop these on here. To make sure the UV scale is the same across all of these objects, I'm going to select each one and remove the match height option and type in an exact number that I want. In this case, all of these are going to be 512. I'm going to hide the grid here to see a little bit better. Notice that our road is not going correctly. It should follow the contour of the road. We're going to change the coordinate system for the road corvex so that its UVs will follow the spline. This will create the effect you're looking for. Notice that for the most part this road is following the spline the way we want. However, up here it needs tweaked. We can fix that quickly. We can also move the center line into the center of our objects more easily. All we have to do is select our object and we'll change the V offset such that they're in the center here. And then we're going to go down and move the splines that control this area such that these are going to now uh, flow correctly. Now the road essentially flows correctly. We could tweak it and work on it more, but uh, we're just going to go forward here. There is another place we have to deal with the UVs, and that is along this wall section here you'll notice that it doesn't seamlessly tile you can see that uh, these sections aren't lining up at each face here and we can control that by going back to this object and based off of the way the the splines were created we can say that we know that these splines are flowing from the first side and now these are all going to seamlessly flow along all the way around and across our terrain there. Now we need to create displacements from the faces in the scene. First we want to tell each Corvex to only select the tops on these ground pieces and this will let the displacement creator know to only use the tops and for this background piece we're going to use the sides and the tops but we don't want these back side pieces so I'm going to add a poly select to this. It might be easiest to deselect all and just click the top ones. I skipped ahead. I selected all of those pieces. Now I can open up Wallworm Anvil and I can select all four of these Corvex objects and choose this option that says faces to displacements. But before I create this, I have to choose the correct power. I'm going to keep this at two and we're going to create those displacements. Now there were 141 displacements created from this scene here. With them still selected, I'm going to right now just convert this into a sculpt mesh and this makes it easier for uh, modeling and sculpting down the road. Now this is one mesh that I can then sculpt and paint the alpha. I'm going to paint the alpha right now to uh, see the different, see the terrain, how it's going to be here. Now we're going to do the blending transition between the road 
and the uh, grass. Then we're going to get out of paint mode, alpha painting, and we're going to hide these splines here so that's not in our way. And now we're going to sculpt this landscape a little bit. So one really cool thing about 3ds Max and uh, being able to sculpt this uh, with an editable poly is you have controls over um, selecting things that you wouldn't have in other programs like Hammer. I selected this entire ridge all at once and I can do things like I want this to to select further edges and move these up if I want a little bit like this and say I wanted this whole ridge up here and I wanted it to scale it out a little bit in certain ways and then we can go into just modeling the, the tools with the graphite modeling tools we can relax and we can continue doing this until we have the the environment that we want specifically here and as you can see it's really quick to just go through and make something like this and there's our quick landscape now again we could have taken a lot more time to specifically um, make these uh, road tiles line up exactly. I wanted to quickly show you a method to do this inside of 3ds Max using Corvex and Wallworm. And of course, the more you know and the the more you know how to use the tools, the more experience you get, the more you'll find that it's really quick and easy to make environments um, efficiently and uh, more effectively than in tools such as Hammer.